Herbert, but we'll talk we'll talk Kyle Pitts at least a little bit here. Um, we have him as tight end one in our consensus. He's tight end two on KTC. Fantasy Pros ADP uh, upcoming is tight end five. Wide has him for tight end six in his projections next year. He had just under six targets per game. Uh, it was a 14% team target share, but of course, that was only on 10 games played. It came out to be 14. In games where he played, he was comfortably closer to 25% of the team targets. Kyle Pitts is a very controversial name. Uh, every You can't bring him up without somebody getting really mad. Either Kelsey tight end one until he dies. You know, Mark Andrews better. There's a whole all these different crowds. But with Kyle Pitts at the end of the day, I can't quit it. Yeah, I need I need another year. I think, you know, situation in fantasy football can change very significantly. He still is a young player. Uh, we really haven't seen his year one production outside of a player like Evan Ingram, which took, you know, injuries to get there. A player like Odell going down um, just really was boosted up with situation. Or Kyle Pitts came in and was the guy. He was the guy. It wasn't by accident that he had a thousand yards as a rookie. The only thing that didn't raise the roof on uh, excitement, which honestly could have gotten higher points for Kyle Pitts was because he didn't have those touchdowns that first year. But again, outlier type numbers. We we talked about like Cole Komet in years past where the season when he had 96 targets or whatever, it was the first time uh, in history somebody had over 90 targets didn't score a touchdown. Like Kyle Pitts was very, very close to those yeah. marks in that season. He just had the one, uh, you know, jokes Kyle Pitts can't score outside of London. Um, so that's really what held that back. Now, if we have him as our tight end six for next year, how can we have him as our tight end one? Travis Kelsey's winning championships. What do you say to those people there, Jake? Uh, we've never seen somebody do what Kyle Pitts did as a rookie, and he's still just 22 years old. It's really what it boils down to. You were we're talking we're talking about the greatest tight end prospect of all time for a reason. Like we can't quit that. We can't give up this early. And I'm I'm one of those guys who has Mark Andrews over him because I think the next two or three years are going to look better for Mark Andrews, and they're going to look for Kyle Pitts. But if you're projecting out past that, two years from now, I'll probably have Kyle Pitts back at one again, just because the talent is there. The talent was there even last year in when in a scheme where he was just used horribly. Um, and people are going to argue. I got to a couple a couple discussions about that on on the Ola. Uh, bird app over there um about kyle pitts and how oh he wasn't used incorrectly he was just he was efficient they targeted him a lot when he was on the field it's like yeah but he wasn't on the field enough to be when he's your second best pass catcher best pass catcher on the offense the scheme is just not going to play to kyle pitts being an elite fantasy guy right away but you're investing in kyle pitts for what the long-term upside is and that's greatest tight end of all time and i don't think that's hyperbole to say we saw him do have the greatest rookie tight end season that we've ever had there's no reason he can't continue that on if quarterback play improves. I, if the Falcons don't make the playoffs this year, I don't think Arthur Smith has a job going into next year anyway, and we're going to see a new system. We're going to see a new scheme. And if you're buying it, not premium prices, which let's be real, it's premium prices, but these aren't the Kyle Pitts prices that people were paying two years ago. Two years ago, you weren't getting Kyle Pitts for less than three firsts. I don't think it takes anywhere near that to get him right now, even if he is the market's tight end one or two. Yeah, no, he was going in the back end of the first round two years ago. Even last year, he was going at the very beginning of the second round. He's now, in a lot of drafts, pushed to the back of the third round of Superflex start of drafts, which for me is very palatable. You're deciding Kyle Pitts versus players like uh, right around him. I mean, Travis Etienne is a type of name that goes around him. Uh, Tyreek Hill is a name that goes around him. DK Metcalf, um, Tua Tagovailoa. And like, we're not talking, in my opinion, like cornerstone type players anymore. And Kyle Pitts in that group is the one that I think absolutely can go back to cornerstone status. Some people still have him there. I think it's really tough for me personally. He's right on the brink. Like he's right yeah. there. The only thing that takes him off is that short term. Um, you know, it's tough for me to confidently say like he will finish top five at tight end. And it's tough for me to say he's a cornerstone of a build if he's not going to be top five at a, the tight end position. Um, but he's right on the brink for me. He's like, he's right there. I think that late third is I'm all over that price. Like I wasn't as interested in Kyle Pitts when he was the one ten, but now that he's the three ten, I'm all over that. Uh, I think you're totally fine. You're the only person on the team who has Mark Andrews over Kyle Pitts. The rest of us have Pitts at one. I really think Pitts and Mark Andrews for me are like pretty darn interchangeable. Exactly. If I'm going to win now, Bill, I'm always going to try to get more not on the Pitts side. But like Mark Andrews' production is he's going to he is going to finish top five for another five years. Like he might not be the tight end one for those five years. He could be tight end two every single year, but he's going to be top five. And if you're in a win window, you might not want to play that game. 
and Mark Andrews, you know what you are getting. Mark Andrews will be a top five tight end if healthy. There is no if ands, or buts about it. That's what Mark Andrews is. It's all he has been for several years in a row now. Um, so I think that's fine. But I will give pushback to people who still have Travis Kelsey number one. Um, the production, it is a difference maker, but it's if you win a championship, you win a championship. Like that's fine. But in a vacuum, Pitts versus Kelsey. Kyle Pitts is 22 years old, man. Like I, I know Travis Kelsey could still be that dude for another two seasons. Could be the title one for another two to three seasons. Kyle Pitts is 22 years old. We, you know, he's got the, the the size of a Jimmy Graham, the athleticism of a Darren Waller, top top 10 pick in the NFL draft, thousand yards as a rookie as a tight end. It's hard for me to quit that. It's hard yeah. for me to quit that. You know, and where I love Travis Kelsey, if, I, if Kyle Pitts hits, I'm I. I don't think I can recover from that. So it's really, really tough for me to to make that decision and to still go with Travis Kelsey. You can justify it. It's understandable. But that's why I still have Kyle Pitts where I have him. Yeah, it's I love Travis Kelsey. I've got him on a couple rosters. It's really nice to have him in your lineup every single week. But you have to accept the, the fact that the man's about to turn 34 years old. And we really haven't seen a lot of tight ends be that productive this late in their career at this level and probably can he continue it sure he's avoided major injuries a lot of the time um but it it just takes one and then his value is gone and that's the risk that you run with aging assets so uh, i have him at three i can't put him any higher um i would love to but it, it's where his value should be he should still be valued as an elite tight end but there are better options long term and it, that's really what it boils down to yeah, exactly. And, you know, early seasons, Mark Andrews, like my only complaint with him, even that 2019 season when he first broke out and was had, you know, the tight end five finish was he was just is he was only playing 50, 60 percent of the snaps. I know that there was, I believe, a little bit of a medical. I don't remember what, if it was asthma or what it was with with Mark Andrews, but he there was a reason he wasn't out there for more. And then obviously once Hayden Hurst moved, he stepped up in his role. I don't know exactly what they figured out, but he jumped back up to. 80% of the snaps. And that's when we saw the stability really come where it didn't have to go on the back of double digit touchdowns like it did in 2019. Travis Kelsey is out there 80% of the snaps. So to Jake's point earlier about um, Kyle Pitts with Arthur Smith, we got to get this guy snaps up because he sh there's no way this guy should be coming off the field. Sometimes 60% of snaps is coming off 40% of the time. Uh, best yeah. player prop best or maybe second best player receiver. I should say on that offense, he should be out there. 70 80 percent of the time and you know hopefully that corrects if it doesn't i think situate i don't want to overplay situation things could always change very quickly if they're not using him correctly and the team as we said aren't winning that division it's probably a coaching change and you know perhaps that could benefit kyle pitt or they could always end up with a, a quarterback either desmond ritter could end up being as i said that alex smith mold where the players around him do just fine because he is competent enough to get the players the ball how they need it he's not turning the ball over or maybe it doesn't work out there and of course we re-roll and we get a different quarterback situation in the future but situations change quickly that's that's all i really have to say about kyle pitts if cole Komet can be on the field for 94.5 percent of the snaps so can kyle pitts yeah that's all i'm saying that's controversial. Some are saying it. I'm not I'm not necessarily saying it, but some are saying it. Yeah. 